I'm going to speak today about the time and space, mostly in my work. It's some kind of reflection. And what I'm going to do now, this mess that you are seeing behind me, is basically my desktop. So welcome to my desktop. Uh, so I'm going to somehow do some kind of live VJing with the PDFs. I never did that before. So this is my first time. Probably it's going to fail. But that's a part of the, the process. So I will start from now. Now, basically, it's a 10 years anniversary of, of, uh, of this map. And this is basically how I started this kind of journey that really I didn't have any idea that will come to this place where I am now. No? So it, it, it was really something else. It started as a, some kind of support for a, a investigative journalists, online media, when they were like attacked and, and in cyberspace, of course. We were, had some kind of team that went around basically and tried to help them, giving them free cyber forensic and legal support in these cases. And, and, but then by doing that, I started to, to to basically draw these maps that were like representing those spaces because like I wanted to see the crime, you know, I wanted to, to see, I wanted to do some kind of, you know, my imagination of cyber forensic, you know, so I wanted to see the space, I wanted to see, you know, like traces of a crime, you know, and, and this idea of crime, it's really something that, that stay until the end, until today, because I, I still think that what I'm investigating is, is a basically a crime scene or, or a place where, where different forms of uh, violation of human rights and, and, and workers' rights are happening. And, and back then, when we started to do this investigation, there were, it, it, it's kind of, you know, 10 years ago, so we had some kind of birth of, I don't know, uh, uh, forensic architecture or, 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 or Bellingcat, we were like speaking about this yesterday. And, so, but the different, what, what I had in my mind, it's, it's a, it was a different perspective in a sense. What they were like doing fantastically and, and great is basically using all of those tricks and, 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 and methodologies to investigate the real, okay, the, the, the world, like real crime, no? So the, for me, it's something that is happening on the surface. But for me, the, the difference in, in what we were like doing is like we were like doing something that is behind the, the, the visible. And in a way, what I'm doing for years is trying to investigate invisible spaces behind. And th this was the first map. So I, I want to speak about the... And also here, like, you can think about time and space. You know, space, in a sense, this is some kind of you know, topography of some space. This is this is map of one internet service provider in Serbia that we investigated because of some attacks. No, so it's some kind of space. You know, and and but but thing is, it's a really super complex space. And once we managed to visualize, we started to do different kinds of inv investigations. But what was for me like really. Uh, uh, let's say important, it's to try to understand what kind of power relations exist within those millions of dots. And basically, if you think about it, there is like many different powers that exist in each of dots. You know, you are one dot, but then the router, it's the next one, the, you know, all of those like invisible infrastructures. But each of those dots have a three different powers. It's a power to see, so the one that is after you, it have a power to see what you are doing. It have a power to block. It have a power uh, to copy. And and uh, so I started to be interested in power also. But the another scale that I want to speak about today, it's also time, because what what we were like doing the events that were like that we were investigating was like events that last for for less than a second or sometimes millisecond. So, and I started to understand that, that behind the screens, in, in these like invisible layers and infrastructure, those power relations, they exist in a different scales. So it, it, they exist in a scale of nanosecond. So for example, we followed one simple internet packet, and this internet packet 
you know, it's a, it's a soap opera, what is going on with one internet packet, you know, like how many different countries, how many different companies are doing something, governments, crossing the ocean, multiplying, being stored, being copied, many things. So, and all of this is happening below our, our like, uh, 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 threshold of, of visibility, not just visibility, but also time scale. And... And then from there, when I, when, when I started to, you know, I, I got the powers to see. What I wanted to, is to see those territories, to see those places. And then st step by step, we were like going further and further. We said, okay, now we are investigating internet service providers. Then behind the internet service providers, there is a server. Who owns the server? Where is this server? So on, so on, so on. So this, this story started to, started with some, something really small, and then evolved step by step into different layers of, of, of invisibility. And then after that one, and, and the feeling that I had for, for, for many years, it's, it's like being detective, you know, like being some kind of childish idea of like some kind of cyber detective, you know, like uh, uh, investigating crimes, trying to, to see, to, to find different ways how to see. And then the first big map that, that we did, is, it was basically this one. Uh, it's called uh, Facebook Algorithmic Factory. And it's another fantasy. You know, all of those maps are basically a fantasy of different powers that we can have, you know, pot potentially. So, for example, this map, it's a fantasy about algorithmic transparency, you know? So we really believed back then, it was like before, it was like I think in 2014, or 15, 16 maybe, uh, we tried to, to, to understand how, what's going on within this black box and, and, and try to use different kinds of methodologies to investigate something that is completely behind many walls of untransparency, you know? And so, in order to do this, you, you, you need to do many different things. We were like scraping different in interfaces, we, we were analyzing patterns, we were like trying to, to do some kind of measurements, trying to, to understand piece by piece, like what's going on in this system. And what is like really crazy is that, that you know, th that was like the time before algorithmic transparency was e even a thing. Because like, for example, I, when I was Googling I don't know, Facebook algorithm, the, all the websites that were there were like speaking just about, uh, you know, how to trick the al algorithm to do something, you know, like for marketing and so on. So, and, and basically the, the, the territory that, that I discovered there, in this story, it's this territory, you know, it's a territory of a map. Because like when you go deep into the, 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 the system, you understand that all of those immense amount of data is stored within a map. And for me, who is like, you know, want to be uh, a critical cartographer, idea of like a map as a territory within those spaces was like something amazing. So, so what we have there, like, Every step, everything that we do, every our movement, every click, every image, every user, everything that we can think of that, that is like basically extracted by different means by this company is stored in the, in the, in the, in the form of a map. And, and basically it's a territory. And then on top of this territory, then you have a different algorithms, different like mathematical functions, different processes that are crawling over this territory and extracting some information. And then those information are creating another territories. So for example, uh, uh, statistical territories, statistical spaces who are like relating, I don't know, your interest with where you live and so on, so on. But this idea of a territory is something that helped me to to, to uh, de develop and, and, and stay attached to this idea of extraction. And, 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 and basically, if you think about this system like from the beginning until the end, it's a form of extraction machine, you know. But it's also a factory. So I was like, I was like really uh, uh, intrigued by the idea because I never understood before like 
you know, like in early 2000s, like why they are earning so much money on this? Like how this internet, what is the business of this internet? And, and until now, I'm not ready to give you a clear answer how this factory look like. And what is like really crazy that none of us can describe the factory in which we are working in many different relations. We are not able to describe a labor, we are not able to describe a factory, we are kind of understanding what is the product, us, we are the product, or so on, so on. So I was like completely, for me, this was like a blueprint uh, of a factory, you know. And, and that kind of thing, you know, like, was well, like really important for me and stay with me for a long time. And then it came like the next map. Now we are going to see a lot of black maps, so, but they are different, you know, when you <laughs> get the, deeper into them. So this one is called Anatomy of an AI System. Maybe you have the chance to, to see it. Uh, Basically, all of those like five, six years, I was like just uh, investigating this line, you know, from the top uh, to bottom of, of this single line. You know? So you have a human being, you have an interface, then you have a network. This drawing is the same drawing as the one that you saw at the beginning. You have rela relations between those uh, uh, internet service providers, then you have some cables under the sea, you have different devices, and so on, so on. So we developed step by step different methodologies how to see through all of those layers, one by one, how to touch them, how to see them, how to describe them, how to speak about them, how basically to, to understand and, and have some kind of insight into, into what's going on then there. But, but then the... the Sorry, I have a, just a second. Okay. But then, in a way, why this, this map is so interesting, maybe even today? This is now like, how many years? Well, like six years after we made this map. It's basically something completely else. And this is this like idea of, of like n-dimensionality of, of those things that I was investigating. So the crazy thing here exploded, basically this like middle line exploded on the left and the right side. And, and it's exploded because we started to investigate time. We started to say, okay, now all of those devices that we were like investigating here in the middle, if you rewind time like 40, 50 years ago, all of those uh, uh, devices and, and everything were like different kinds of metals, you know, different kinds of rocks. And then if you start to follow those rocks, the story of, of those rocks, then the story became completely different. You know, it's not anymore about like, I don't know, like uh, cybersecurity, privacy, um, this kind of relation between us and technology. We basically established story that is connecting us, human beings, society, technology, and nature. Because all of those, you know, raw materials and metals are coming from nature. And, and the process of transformation of them are completely catastrophic towards na nature. No? But then the story became completely different, you know, then you have like uh, many different steps that are happening there, and each of those steps are, are, are influencing either nature or, 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 or human beings. Each of those steps have their own, you know, env environmental cost that is not included, and so on, so on. But basically, this is expansion of the same map, same line, into another dimension, you know, another space. So we are seeing something from another angle, and each of those uh, metals, elements, can tell a different story. So if you start, so now we are not seeing anymore this space, this territory, from the position of human being, because all of our research before was like 
starting as a, from the human being, but this one was starting from elements, and it's a completely different story. You know? And then I understood, and I started to be obsessed with this and dimensionality of this story, you know. So, for example, if you go, you start the story normal, you know, like it's starting with you, and then you have some data going on, and then it goes into router, for example. But then from here, the story can go in completely different dimension. So, for example, you go into the dimension of electricity, and then you are going into a different cable, then you are going into different infrastructure, then you are going in, into, uh, again, some kind of really complex story that at the end will again finish in some kind of coal mine or, or whatever where the electricity is coming from, no? So, in a way, I start to be interested in this multi-dimensionality of all of those relations, you know? And, and what this map started to speak about basically started to speak about planetary scale systems. So we started with one single internet packet, but we ended up on a planetary scale system. And, and it was not just one planetary scale system, it was like many planetary scale systems. So it's a planetary scale system of communication. We have networks, internet, whatever. No? It's a planetary scale system of production. So for example, I was completely obsessed with the idea of like, those ports where you have like these cargo ships moving goods all around the world, it's a type of internet that have like some, its own protocols, automated routing protocols of those packets that are basically Earth moving around globe. So this is the planetary scale system of production. Then you have a planetary scale system of co uh, computation that is not the same planetary scale system of communication. Communication, it's cables, routers, computation, it's in the data centers, so on, so on. So we have, by, by dissecting this thing, we were like coming into, you know, seeing those planetary scale systems and that different dimensions of planetary scale system, from nano dimension of element or nanosecond to a planetary scale system. And, and for all of those maps that I was making, this one I did with, with, with Kate Crawford. Mo all of those maps, not all, like last two, three, I'm working with other people because I really, you know, it, it's easier to, to, because like each of those maps, it's like one, two years of investigation. You know? So it's easier to go this, through this process with someone. You know? and, and, and different people are giving different angles to, to the same uh, thing. And, and for me, for example, all of those maps, you know, I you know, spend the, the big time it's invest, investigation. So I still see this, even these maps are now ended up in like big museums and, you know, galleries and, and are treated as art sometimes. I still see them as a, some kind of investigation documentation because the most of the time I'm spending on investigation. And behind each of those, do, each of those dots or line, is some kind of investigation process, no? And, but what I understood is like, you know, if, if we are looking into this black box, we need to see this black box from many different angles. So just like a technical, uh, and we need to see them through different glasses, you know? So for example, one glass, it's an investigative journalism glass. You have a method, you are like investigating, going around, sending some, you know, like there's many different met methods of that. Another one, it's technical investigation. But each of those types of investigation, it's a, basically one angle, and with this angle you are seeing some kind of object, abstract object, no? So more angles you have, the more precise picture of this black box is. And then I understood that I'm spending, you know, like, one year, two years in an investigation process, but then I again need one year to think about this map. Because for me, the, 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 the more important question is what is the meaning of this map? Not what this, how this map looks like and what kind of, you know. And, uh, but in order to give an answer to meaning, it's another field, basically. It's, uh, and then I you know, understood that, that 
you know, media theory, critical media theory, philosophy, art, it's in some way a way to understand this from another angle, no? And, and, and so I started to be really involved into, into reading of different theories, different philosophers, and, and while I was doing that, I was basically uh, drawing some of these kind of like uh, concepts and ideas, and out of this I created this map, it's called uh, New Extractivism, and this one is probably the craziest one of, of all of them. And, and it's about visualizing different kinds of concepts and ideas that I was like reading and, and being interested in order to give an answer to these black maps. You know? and, and, uh, and out of that, this is the only time that I went outside of the map as a form. I created this video. I, I will just like play a few minutes. Uh, Black holes. Our imaginary hero is swimming against one of those platforms gravitational force. As they glide towards the singularity defined by the mass of these giants, users and content pass beyond the event horizon, the imaginary boundary in time and space, beyond which there is no return to the outer part of this universe. The event horizon defines the line after which the social and economic price of leaving those platforms is becoming too high. No matter how fast they try to swim now, the stream will pull them towards the center of the black hole. Without even noticing, this story's actor is now falling towards the hole into a new allegory, the cave. For so wh why I was doing that? Because like I, we, even for example when I was working with Matteo Pasquinelli, we, on, on this noscope that, 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 that Bani showed a, a bit, we don't have a language to speak about those things that are happening. We don't have a language to explain those uh, uh, relations, the new labor relations, new forms of exploitation, new relations between us as the users and them as the owners of the spaces that we work in and so on and so on. So for that I found like really important it's to try to, to build new metaphors and new words, new relations in order to explain to us because we need to find a way how to speak about it. No? Allegory of the cave. What takes place at the bottom of this metaphorical black hole can be described through Plato's allegory of the cave. Plato describes a group of people who spend their entire life chained to cave walls looking at a blank wall. These people are watching the shadows of real objects projected on this wall, giving them names and meanings. In our story, the script and directing of this performance of shadows are entrusted to human algorithmic machines that regulate, filter, censor and moderate the projected content on the walls of the cave. The existing elements and content that exist outside this cave and horizon of events create an information flow, a theater of shadows. 5. Walls the cave and tower walls are constructed of multiple opaque layers and built mostly by ghost work or invisible labor. The bricks of this structure are made of black boxes, closed code and hardware, glued together with the invisible network infrastructure. They are covered with layers of corporate secrets, patents and copyrights. 6. The Interface Interfaces are framing and structuring the projected algorithmic spectacle of images. Even though they are a direct manifestation of rules, regulations and taxonomies, they successfully obscure what is hidden beneath them. They define directly or indirectly what we can or cannot do. They are both tools and discursive frames. They are instituted as an order of discourse and embodiment of the discipline power of the platform. This cave is not only a prison cell, but it carries out the function of a factory hall and a resource extraction apparatus. The prisoner performs their threefold function as a worker, a resource and a product. 7. Shadows and Capture Agents The spectacle of a constant flow of information projected through the interface creates a digital shadow on the opposite wall of the cave. The projected digital shadow on the wall is a resource field where thousands of capture agents, tentacles of the rhizomatic surveillance complex, extract information. 
Every movement or emotional reaction is being recorded continuously. These capture agents can take many forms and sizes. From the tiny pieces of code, crawlers that wander the web, over the sensors catching heartbeats and surveillance cameras capturing our faces, to the complex network of satellites orbiting Earth. They can see our shadows through a full range of the electromagnetic spectrum. They can be invisible or massive like a 500 meters wide radio telescope. The process of quantification is reaching into the human affective, cognitive and physical worlds. Every segment of our existence reflected on our digital shadows, can be seen as a form of direct or indirect labor producing data as a behavioral surplus. When we breathe, walk, or sleep, every single emotion that we feel, our attention, our body temperature, or diseases that we have, everything can produce a behavioral surplus if being captured by surveillance apparatus. In that sense, even our bare existence within the walls of the cave can be seen as labor. Prisoner workers need to spend more and more hours maintaining their profiles in a similar fashion to sex workers in the windows of red light districts. Digital identity labor is the forced labor of the 21st century. This creates an auto-disciplinary society where each anomaly and misbehavior is detected and quantified. 8. Plotoptic. So there is like 32 chapters and I'm really avoiding like presenting this because like on, on one of the previous events, not here in, in Amsterdam, I, I was like some person stood up and said like, you know, this thing should be uh, forbidden, forbidden because of what I'm doing. It's some kind of postmodern uh, terrorist poetry. So I'm like really avoiding in order not to, to, to get any kind of like uh, yeah, problems with it. And, and then at the end, I, I think I will speak a bit more than this one minute, uh, is, is this madness. Uh, again, four years, but really serious four years together with, with Kate Crawford on, on this map. Uh, and basically there is a two maps. This is just a half of the map. So at the end, we had like a one room in which you are entering on the both side of the room, you have like those two maps. And it started as a really interested idea. It started as, okay, we, we kind of touched the idea of time with the anatomy of an AI system. You know, we were speaking about this time perspective, starting like from minerals to, to the present. And, but this one, it's really about time. This one, it's really about uh, uh, history. So uh, basically we created two maps. One is communication and computation map, another one is uh, classification and control. And those maps, so the story is starting in, in 1500s, ending up in, in a present day. So the, the first map, communication and computation, it's kind of easy, you know, it's not so hardcore, dark story, it's about devices, no? Uh, but what we wanted to do here, we, we basically this map is again this kind of backbone of anatomy of an AI system. It's also starting with communication devices. So basically in, in that case it was a, a, um, Amazon Alexa. Then it goes into interface, so, for example, voice interface. Then it goes into infrastructure. Then it goes, so we are going deeper, 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 no? Data collection, information. So you collect data, then you are organizing data. Then you have a layers of algorithms. Then you have a layers of, of models. Then you have a layer of computing, sometimes human computing, sometimes you know, real computing with, with hardware. And we, we are ending up with this kind of crazy unconventional forms of computing. So we created some kind of like a story that stretched 500 years of history of those infrastructure. Why? Many reasons. Because like we are living in a you know, in period in which, like, everything, the, the present is so hyper, 
uh, intense that we don't have a capacity to, to go back, to reflect, to understand the relations. And, and, and this, again, you know, we were like, I was speaking before the, the, you know, we can speak about AI as a black box, we can speak about like supply chains as a black box, we can speak about many black boxes, but history is also a black box, you know, that need to be open, that need to be rethink differently, that need to be critically analyzed because we can find the patterns and relations that exist today that are repeating, you know, there is this quote by Mark Twain, the history maybe doesn't repeat, but it rhymes. So we can find the, the, the same forms of relations and powers that are, that are basically not present-day power relations, but they are rooted back in 500 years of mostly colonial relation and capital. And, and somehow through this research, you know, there is this idea of the, maybe the, the, the main setup, it's wrong the main fundamental values are wrong, because it's constantly repeating. And in and, and this map, it's also a story about automation, because we are seeing, and now we are in some kind of seeing a new iteration of this automation madness that is going to happen. And every form of automation is bringing different kinds of like redistribution of wealth. But in this time, those ones who are already super wealthy will be even more wealthy, but never mind. So this is the map about Basically, some kind of deep dive into, into history of, of media and communication and computation. And you can find many different stories because I remember also, you know, every time when we were trying to explain even those like first researches about like browsing history and stuff, we were like finding a stories that were like mostly based, it, based it in 1850s about like these kind of new forms of centralization and new forms of power. So metadata it doesn't come as an idea from today. It's coming from like 1850s with, with the postmarks, with the postal systems and so on and so on. So what we were like trying to find for four years is basically relations that were already there, some kind of like the, 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 the complexity of this history that can give us some new answer. And then the, 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 the another map, oh, sorry. is basically the hardcore one. Uh, <laughs> it is about control and classification. Uh, because we have all of those systems and technologies they exist as a, I don't know, whatever, and many people are, are claiming all the time this story, like technology is neutral and whatever, it's never neutral, and that's completely uh, crazy idea. So they all end up as a form embedded in a, in a systems of control. But what was like really interesting for me, and this is one of the, the biggest like, uh, 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 takeouts from this like immense research that we did, is basically a story about classification, like history of classification. Because like classification is the core of automation, core of AI, core of extraction. Uh, because when you, when you see the history of classification, especially when classification is applied to, to human beings, you have, it's basically giving us a birth of, of like scientific racism, uh, physical anthropology. This is all like types of classification. How we are classifying us, how we are classifying others, how we are basically, you know, like uh, justifying colonialism, how we are justifying racism is basically through classification, through measuring of people. And then you can follow this story into criminal anthropology or birth of biometry that is basically embedded in a, in a in the present day uh, AI. So like the, the, you know, once you have a photography, then it's first apply in the jails, then it's first, you know, then you have like this kind of like first classification of prisoners and so on and so on. Then you have like completely different story or similar story about like uh, classification of intelligence, you know, that is also like misrepresented as a form of power and so on and so on. So this one, it's like, it's kind of starting with this Foucauldian uh, time, education, uh, um, body, biometrics, prison, policing, borders, bureaucracy, colonialism, 
political and economic system, production, energy resources, and then it goes into, into Earth, lithosphere, atmosphere, biosphere, astrosphere, basically control of all of that, no? Spatial representation, architecture as a form of control, surveillance infrastructure, military doctrine, and so on, so on. And on the top of all of those fields of control, you have an AI systems that are coming in the or they're already there, or they're coming. So we can speak about borders. Now the borders are, are basically playground for many kind of experimentation in, in facial recognition, in, in emotion recognition, so on, so on. And what is completely, why I showed you the, the new extractivism, because this map is kind of using, and it's probably going to be hard for, for many people to, to read, but it's using this kind of like, uh, uh, sometimes abstract forms of representation, you know, like uh, sometimes it's really precise, sometimes it's data, sometimes it's a story, sometimes... So what we are trying to, to, to ask all the time, how we can represent different relations, you know, like is it a triangle or it's a square or how it looks like this relation. So. Of course, I don't have a time now to, to go into it, and I, I still don't, we, we still don't know how to speak about this map. We, we did first iteration in Milano, now we are going to do in Berlin, and it's really something that, that you need to experience maybe with, with body being in the space, because it's not for 30 minute presentation. It, it, it takes time. So it takes time to, to do it, but it takes also a lot of time to get into it, to try to use it as a territory, to try to use it as a tool to do something else. Because like also anatomy of an AI was used a lot as a tool for other people to do whatever crazy thing they want to do with it. And I, we hope somehow that this map will also uh, find a way to, to, um, to, to become some kind of tool for, for exploration you know, for some kind of critical and maybe abstract reading of the history that can help us to better understand present and to maybe create some kind of better future. I think I'm done with this. <laughs> okay. Thank you.